If you are just joining us, we have been following this breaking story here of this helicopter that, uh, for whatever reason, and that is uh, TBD, had to crash land on top of this uh, huge building in the middle of Midtown Manhattan. As a result of this forced landing, uh, you, there was a fire on, on top of the building. This is all according to the governor and, and police. The fire has been contained. You can see by these pictures that it has been pouring rain. Uh, the ceiling is low, low visibility. Uh, in the city. So one of the huge questions is why was a helicopter flying? Whose helicopter was it? And how many were in uh, the, the helicopter? We know that we can confirm one death um, and we don't know anything much beyond that. Uh, Miguel Marquez is on the scene. We've now got him in front of a camera. So Miguel, show us, uh, show us what you're seeing and tell us what, you, what you've been reporting out. Yeah, I want to show you the building here. So this is 7th Avenue, looking uptown 7th Avenue. You can just see the, the, the large number of emergency vehicles up here. And then if you look up to your right here, this is the building, 51 stories high. You can just make out the top of it now, and there is no obvious uh, damage to the building or smoke uh, coming off of it. That may be because it is just such a cloudy day right now. I want to jump in here. There's a gentleman here who was at work when all of this happened. Uh, and I want to chat with him real quickly if you can. 35 when it happened to, to five minutes after two. It took a half hour to get from the 29th floor down to the ground floor. There were just too many people. It was too crowded. And everybody was trying to get off on all the floors at the same time. Sir, when this incident this happened, what did you feel? What did you hear? You could feel the building shake. And you could actually hear the alarms when they went off the alarms went off security came in told us everybody get out of the building now do not take the elevators walk down the stairs uh we could feel it when it hit but no one knew what it was we thought like years ago when they had an earthquake and you felt the buildings here in manhattan shake we thought well that might have happened again but when they said that a helicopter hit we thought a helicopter? You were on the 29th floor. Did you smell smoke? Did you see fire? Only coming down the staircase, you could smell it coming down the staircase because that whole staircase is like one big shaft, a vent. It's like you could smell the smoke, not thick, but you knew that there was smoke. Did it smell like fuel or what did it smell like? Uh, it smelled like, a, it smelled like construction material that was on fire or burn burning. That is the smell you smell. Any of your colleagues, did everybody that you know make it out all right? That was what I was just checking to make sure everybody on, everybody in my department, everybody on my floor did get out of the building. But uh, there were a lot of people that were still on the way out when we got downstairs. So there are a lot of upper floors up there. Given the history of the September t uh, 11th, 2001, what was it like when you felt it and the confusion there? Well, a lot, a lot of people felt the building shake, and that's what they thought. Well, at first, they didn't think a lot of it, but then when security said, get out of the building, then you got a little nervous, then you started thinking, staircase, do I want to be coming down a staircase if there's something bad that's happening? We had no choice. We all got out. Everybody was somewhat calm, but they were nervous because that thought is in the back of, of your mind. May I have your name? Uh, my name is Nick. My name is Nathan Hutton. H U T T O N. O -N yes. And what, you're on the 29th floor. What do you do there? Uh, I work in B and P. I work in the I in the I T department. And you're okay. Oh yeah, I'm fine. Thank, Nathan, how old thank you very much. Uh, just one story of the many uh, that we will hear in the days ahead from this. Let me show you again, sort of what this looks like. If you go all the way to the top of the building, if you can. Uh, still no indication of what Mr. Hutton was talking about. He was about uh, a little over halfway up that building and said he felt it, uh, he felt that helicopter crash into the building. But from yeah. at least this side of it, perhaps on the other side of the building you can see more, but on this side of it there's absolutely no indication of any sort of emergency in this building. But uh, a lot of people, I think, uh, breathing a little easier right now. But still the governor said there was uh, you know, injuries and or fatalities in that helicopter. So whether it was a corporate helicopter ferrying uh, someone across town, a news helicopter, or, or the many helicopters that fly around uh, New York on any given day, uh, we're, we're yet to find out. Brooke?
Miguel, thank you so much. And thank Mr. Hutton for us as well. And, you know, from your vantage, you're not seeing, uh, I hear you a lot of smoke, but as we're looking at these live pictures from one of our affiliates here in the city, that looks like smoke to me uh, coming off the top of that building. You know, I know that the weather has been nasty. I know that the visibility has been poor, but that looks like plumes of smoke coming off of this 51 story building in Midtown Manhattan. And obviously that, that explains, you know, that the incredible uh, the word Miguel used was pandemonium, the, the, the presence, right, the, the uh, fire and police, uh, as we've been reporting, one fatality um, and uh, trying to, to wrap our heads around why a helicopter would have been flying, how many people would have been the helicopter, and, and if anyone Anybody was injured, else? even in, in the building. Bryn Gingrass has been sitting here with me. She's been, she's been working uh, on getting us some new information, so you have more on the death. Yes, we have more. We have confirmed that uh, a fatality is the pilot. However, we have to be very clear because we're not sure if the pilot uh, being killed in this crash is separate from the fatality we just reported. So it. is it two people who were killed? Is it one? That's what we're still trying to clarify. But we do know that the pilot was killed uh, in this crash and you're mentioning that video and you brought it to my attention as Miguel was talking. I mean, that is an eerie sight, right? Yeah. And that's exactly uh, what authorities raced to. Yeah. They got this call just before two o'clock. They first were told that it was a plane that crashed into a building and as the governor said, PTSD, PTSD. right away. Um, and of course, there was almost a sigh of relief in a way uh, when they learned it was not as serious Just bring it down a notch. Thinking back to 9-11, of course. Certainly very serious of as course. we know at least one person was killed. All right, uh, Bryn, thank you very much. Uh, let's go back down to the scene to Miguel Marquez. He's got another eyewitness for us. Miguel? Yeah, we have Morgan Aries here. He was on the 14th floor of this building. Is that yes. correct, sir? So, how, how, well, one, how are you doing? A little shaken, I take it. A little it. shaky uh, at this point, but at least now we've got some clarity as what happened. Uh, what, what did you? What were you in the middle of, and what happened? So, I work on the 14th floor. I commute every day. I'm here, and um, we were all in our chairs, and we felt a little bit of a tremor. Like, wow, that's that's something that's unusual. That doesn't normally happen. And sure enough, about 10 minutes later, five, 10 minutes later, we heard the loudspeaker. Uh, the guy reported we need to evacuate uh, immediately. The first report we got was that we needed to stay in our seats and just remain. Stay in your seats. Stay there. The very first report was just we're finding more clarity on what's going on. And then about another five minutes later, they said, OK, it's time to evacuate. Everyone, please go to the stairwells. Please get up and go. And so that's when we did. And uh, it was a little nerve wracking in the stairwell because nobody knew what was going on. But we did feel the tremors, so that's what made it a little more surreal. Was it orderly getting out? Were you able to get out properly? Yes, it was a little congested, obviously. We got a lot of floors in the building to get out, uh, a lot of people. But there was a moment in which we all couldn't get out of the building immediately because we're all just backlogged in there. So wait, how long How long were you at your desk before you guys all started to move? Total five minutes? I would say about five to ten minutes is when we eventually started to get up and out of there and uh, evacuate from the 14th floor. But it took a, a good amount of time to actually get out of the building because there was congestion in the stairwell. Uh, and I mean, when you heard, did you hear it was, at what point did you know it was some sort of aircraft that hit the building? Everyone in the stairwell was just checking the news to find out what was going Going on because like I said at a couple points in time uh, we couldn't it we were just so congested that we weren't able to actually get out fast so uh, once everyone was checking their phones we we're looking for news for updates it wasn't until we got outside of the building that we understood that it was actually a, a helicopter that hit the building. I, I take it that would have been even less uh, helpful to know that information. Yeah, at that the point, history here. yeah, there was a lot of sirens going on when we got out of the building. Did, and, you, uh, did you smell smoke? Did you see any fire? No, none of that. None did, of that. Do you know if there's a helicopter pad on top of this building? I do not know that. Don't Can we get your that. name? And, and yeah, what you Morgan do? Aries. Thank you very much. Can you tell us one more time what floor are you so, on? Uh, in, these are the sort of, uh, pardon me, these are the sort of stories that we will hear uh, uh, time and again from people who try, you know, got out of this building. It's just very, very unnerving for people. A lot of confusion. It's surprising to hear that they were told to stay in their seats until they figured out more, and only then did they affect an evacuation. And clearly in this building, I don't know what year it was built, but it's, you know, it's, it's not a brand new building, and I don't know what the evacuation routes are like, but, you know, two people now have said they were very, very crowded stairways, uh, and it was... Uh, a little concerning getting out of the building because of the crowding as they were trying to, to exit the building. But it sounds like at least the two floors from people we've spoken to so far on the 29th and the 14th that people were able to get out at least on those floors. Brooke.
Uh, Miguel, thank you so much. And, you know, it, just to underscore your point, yeah. the governor's point, it is uh, it is eerie. Uh, it is PTSD. D, just to hear people say I was on the 29th floor, I was on the 18th floor, the stairwell was crowded, trying to get out of there, uh, alarms, uh, the building shook. Um, but at least, thank goodness, uh, in terms of fatalities, as Bryn was reporting, one confirmed dead, that is the pilot, perhaps that is in addition to the other confirmed fatality, we just don't yet know. Uh, I've got a tweet, let me just read this, we'll read this together, this is from FDNY, confirms helicopter has crash landed on this roof, the fire has been extinguished and members continue to operate in response to fuel leaking from the helicopter.